Right. Hello and welcome back to Entraz. Today our video is going to talk a little bit about Cisco's recertification policy. Now it seems they've changed it up a little bit since you know the last I've even looked. It seems like they have introduced continuing education credits to be able to recertify. Of course this does leave a little bit to be desired when you're talking about concentration exams, core exams, and of course how to recertify in general. So we're going to look here at the Cisco Training Certifications Recertification Policy. Cisco Live is apparently going global now. They have a two-day digital event. You can earn continuing education credits and have an opportunity to choose one of three exclusive learning options, of course. All certification levels will have a three-year recertification requirement. Individuals will be able to recertify by completing continuing education activities, taking exams, or a combination of both, as you can see here. Take an exam, of course, that's always kind of been the case. But now they're including Cisco Live Training Sessions, authoring content for exams and for Cisco, completing online training courses, instructor-led training, and other three-year certification requirements. So yeah, it seems like they really want people to start spending more money getting online and instructor-led training. Now, you don't have to do the training through Cisco, but it's one of the things that they kind of want and recommend. So you'll see things here. All certifications active for three years. Each time you complete recertification requirements, your status will be extended for additional three. Okay. Here's an example of how the new certification cycle will work. If you're certified February 1st, 2019, it'll expire February 1st, 2022. If you recertify in November of 19, it gets pushed back for three years to November of 22. Then you recertify August 1st, 2020, it goes to 23. That's kind of the same thing about what it was before. A significant change to CCIEs, though. Before the 24th, CCI certifications were active for two years, and each recertification event extended your cert additional two from the original certification date. Two important changes were made. The one-year suspended state was removed, converted to active, to align with the three-year recertification cycle. And the CCI recertification cycle changed to use the recertification event date and is no longer based on your original certification date. So that's actually pretty cool. You can track your status on the career certification tracking system and of course the CCIE tracker. And here's where we get into the meat of it. Certification level and duration, well, they're all three years. So the associate, you would have to complete 30 CE credits to recertify. You can also pass any one associate exam, a professional concentration exam, or the core exam. So like as an example, you can pass the CCNP Enterprise Core. It'll renew the associate. Uh, you take the Cisco SD-WAN concentration, it renews your associate. And then, of course, the expert level written in lab will renew. Specialist, kind of the same. It's got 40 CEs instead of 30. Pass a professional concentration or core or CCIE. But here's the thing for the professionals, and one of the things that kind of annoys me the most about their recertification plan. You can pass a professional concentration exam and earn 40 CEs. So you have to pass one of their comprehensive and, dare I say, pretty difficult concentration exams and still have to provide 40 hours of continuing education. Of course, if you don't want to take an exam, you can earn 80 CEs. Always fantastic considering some of us, like myself, with the CISSP, already have to do CEs for that. So now we need to spend even more money trying to get CE credits. One of the things you can do is pass a technology core exam. So like if you have your CCNP Enterprise, you can take the security or the data center or whatever else they have. 
Otherwise, you can pass two concentration exams, which I always thought was really interesting because, well, you take the core, you take a concentration, your CCNP. So what they're doing here is having you do two concentrations that don't provide another CCNP certification. Or you can pass another core, but we all know that's a wide range of stuff that you have to know and learn. So I really wish the concentration exam was still the single requirement to renew the professional as you're still learning and moving forward with Cisco. Learning SD-WAN, ACI, shouldn't that be an extension of the enterprise or data center CCNPs? Well, apparently, according to Cisco, no, it's not. Of course, the CCIE, CCDE, and Architect are three, three, and five years now. Uh, CCIE pass any one expert level written exam or lab, pass any three concentration exams, pass one technology core exam, and pass any one professional exam. So you need to get another CCNP to renew your CCIE. So if you're CCIE and Enterprise, well, just go out and get your CCNP data center and it'll renew. You can also pass a core exam and 40 CEs, two concentrations and 40 CEs, one professional concentration and 80 CEs, or 120 CEs. Still, it makes no sense here. If you have a CCI in Enterprise, wouldn't you want to keep up on that Enterprise because that's what your CCI is in, right? But you're going to go out and get Data Center and you're going to start losing maybe what you learned on the CCIE track because they're requiring you to get other stuff. I mean, I get it. There are CCIEs out there that have four, five, six, or seven. The problem is those people got their CCIEs some, what, 15, 20 years ago? So now, of course, they have seven of them, but unless they have, like, identic memory and can remember everything they've ever learned off the top of their head, and I envy those people, of course, for us, it's one or two and then we really can't keep up with the new certification requirements especially now now that we have the SD-WAN, the ACI, all this software based stuff uh, learning ICE, um, Cisco Firepower now has to be learned over the ASA they really have a lot of different things and I don't know as an average person myself I can't remember something I did 15 years ago and have it apply today. Whatever, I guess, huh? So for the CCDE, it's pretty much the same, except you can pass the Certified Architect interview and the Architectural Board review to renew your design expert. So basically, you have to get your Architect certification to renew your CCDE. Intriguing, I guess. The architect, of course, is valid now for five years and will remain certified as long as they continue to contribute to maintain the Cisco Architect program. Current recertification policies require the architects to complete events within the 24 months preceding the expiration deadline. Contribute to development lifecycle, significant participation in the creation of new exam content, significant review refinement of existing content, involvement in future direction of the program, participation as a judge in candidate evaluation, application review interview for two candidates. Uh, in the case where a candidate's application is not approved to progress through the board review, or application review interview and in-person board review for one candidate in the case where the candidate's application is approved to progress to the board review. So yeah, they uh, added a little bit to this. Let's come here and, I don't know, learn about continuing education. Lifelong learning, principles, requirements, qualifying options, governance, and we have a CE catalog now. Let's see. Apparently, this provides flexibility by making it more difficult, diversity by making it more difficult, and integrity. 
Now, considering you can renew your CCIE with a CCNP of a different track, I'm not sure integrity works there. However, CE learning new enterprise information could keep up your integrity, I guess. And I've met a lot of CCIs at Cisco that really weren't that helpful because, oh, they were CCI Enterprise, but they've been focusing on something else. So, go figure. You have the Continuing Education Portal. Uh, da, 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 da. Go back to the policy, and here you go. Three items, or three types of Continuing Education categories. Eligible courses to take by Cisco or Learning Partners, of course. Cisco Live 2021, exam writing, the CE process, and of course the CE policies and rules. Uh, this does not make me happy. Anyway, um, let's see, CCNP, CCDP training, do, 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 do. troubleshoot, data center unified computing, DCUCT, you get 30 credits. I believe it requires 40 to renew. So they're kind of screwing you on those two. Implementing multicast is 40. Do, 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 do. Enterprise advanced routing and services is 40. Implementing operating Cisco data center core is actually 64 CEs. So I guess that's a nice way to go for your data center core exam or your Enterprise Core, you'll get 64 credits, which might renew your other CCNP, but you still have to take and pass the uh, the core exam you're working on, and then take another concentration exam to get CCNP, and then have to worry about the continuing credits all over again. So yeah, there are a lot of options in here from CCNP, CCNA. They really went through to let you know what each of these credit items were. Eligible courses, instructor-led trainings, printed course kits. I'm kind of wondering what that is. Digital learning courses. Course credit value may vary based on duration, complexity, and depth of content. Well, of course. Uh, let's see, I think it's learningnetworkstore.cisco.com is where you can come to look at a lot of this trainings. Self-paced training, instructor-led, CML, assessments, etc. So I'm going to open up self-paced and instructor-led here. Let's go into instructor-led first and see if we can find DC Core. Cisco delivery types, virtual classroom, 10 offerings. Duration is 5 days. Let's see. Okay, nothing in here says that you can get CEs. Oh, there it is. Earn 40 CE credits toward recertification of existing certs. So you can come in here, find the training to get new technology, and of course, recertify. So let's see. Let's enroll in this, see what happens. Hey, look at that, $4,500. That's what Cisco wants now. It wants us to pay $4,500 to take training to recertify. Well, you can't just read a book anymore. You have to pay $4,500 to take a course. Well, let's take a look at On Demand. So let's see, Certification Training Professional CCNP Data Center. Here you go, CC, uh, D DCCOR e-learning bundle. Uh, it's 2040 for the learning and the exam. It's actually a pretty decent offer. Especially if you're using um, Cisco credits, the, the CE credits, because then you don't have to pay for the exam. But let's look at this. $1,500 for a self-paced course. 64 continuing education credits. 
It's kind of odd, doesn't it? It seems you can get 64 CECs for doing the self-paced, but only 40 for doing the in-person. But Cisco is still making you pay that $1,500 with a 25% discount, mind you, in order to pay to recertify. Fantastic. You know, I actually took this training course, and seriously, all you're really doing is reading. Cisco wrote a book, and you're just reading the book. I mean, yeah, you get some hands-on. You know, normally you wouldn't get hands-on with things like this. So uh, you may, may be able to go on and, and configure routing on a Nexus device. It gives a little bit of hand-on, but still, $1,500 to recertify? Or you can take a new core and a new specialist and or learning credits. I don't know. I don't know about the rest of you, but I really don't like their new continuing education program. I mean, for CCIEs, I get it. Those people need to keep up. They need to recertify. But CCNP level, this is, this is kind of weird. And, you know, we have no choice, so we really have to... Make the best of it, I guess. But once again, remember, <sighs> if you have your CCNP, you can pass one technology core or pay 1500 bucks for that. Ah, oh, I was even wrong on that. Look at that. It's 80 CEs. So you pay $4,500 for the training but you still have to pass the exam. <laughs> yeah, that's just insane. I mean, you get 64 credits for an on-demand, and it doesn't even cover the 80. You still have to take the exam. So you know what? Once again, here at Entraz, we're creating a program that lets you learn for free. So you know what? If you have to pass this technology core exam anyway... Why not? Learn for free with us. Work with Entraz. Don't pay Cisco $4,500 to get training or $1,500 to only get 64 credits and you still have to pay the, what, $400 to take the exam. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt however you want to do it. But in my personal opinion, this is just insane. So, you know what? Whatever. It's what we got to do. Once again, if you have anything you need to see, just uh, email us, support at entraz.com. Uh, uh, get with us on Facebook, message us. We can communicate there. Otherwise, stay tuned. Uh, we're working on some regular technology videos, working on this Firepower 1010 over here, uh, starting to create some CCNA and CCNP content. So, Stay tuned, and hopefully we can weather this storm. See you later.